Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we are going to be looking at compound lenses, which is basically when you have a lens diagram that has literally two lenses. It can be, for instance, two converging. If you want, you can have one converging and one diverging. If you want, you can have two diverging. Or if you really want, you can have like any combination of lenses that you want that go on forever. Now, of course, we probably aren't going to do that. We're just going to focus on two lenses for today because that's really all you see in class most of the time. But even if there was more than two, the principles will remain the same. So the first thing I want to say is we are using the same equation that we did before for lenses and for mirrors. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. You need to remember the positive side and the negative side for lenses because for lenses, let me just look at one lens, it doesn't matter which one, but for any lens, this side is positive for DO, and this side is positive for F and for DI. So that's the positive direction, which then means the opposite is true for the other directions, like this is where DI is negative and F is negative, and this is where DO is negative, and that's going to come into play today. And then the other equation we have is the magnification total is equal to magnification 1, times magnification two times dot 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 for however many magnifications you have. Now remember the individual magnifications that has two equations as well, it's height of your image over height of your object or it's negative di over do. And so what you're gonna do here is you're just gonna string along as many magnifications as you have for the different equations. And then the final thing I'll say about these problems before we jump into one is that there's always going to be a distance between these lenses and you need to remember this distance and how it impacts your image versus your object because let's just say hypothetically you get this as your DO and then you get this as your DI right this is very reasonable well this is your DI but now this is your new DO or if you want to call it DO2 Basically, what I'm trying to say is you have to be careful with what we consider to be our image distance and our object distance between these two lenses. And like we said before that this would be a real image because it's inverted. Well, that was actually a lie I said to just kind of help us along. Real image does not always mean inverted, although it usually does. A real image really just means you have a positive di that's what it really means and 99 percent of the time it's going to be inverted but we're going to see some examples today where that's not necessarily true when you have these compound lenses now one thing i do want to say because of all these lenses we're going to have a mixture of real and virtual images like maybe this lens makes a real image but this one makes a virtual image so then what's the answer is it a real image or is it a virtual image and the answer is all images need to be real for the final image to be real. And so yes, that means if you have 99 real images and one virtual image, the whole thing's virtual. One bad apple spoils the bunch. So with that, let's go ahead and look at some example problems. So let's say I have a converging lens over here and nearby is a diverging lens. And let's say these two are separated by a distance of 80 centimeters. I'm gonna say the focal length for the converging lens is 20 centimeters, and the focal length for the diverging lens is negative 20 centimeters. They don't have to be the same number, I'm just making that a coincidence. And then for DO here, let's say that distance is 30 centimeters. And what I would like to know is, where is my final image produced? And what's the magnification for that image? So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get started with the first lens here. I'll label them 1 and 2. So first I'm going to do the equation 1 over F1 equals 1 over DO1 plus 1 over DI1. And right now I'm just solving for DI1. This is pretty easy because all the numbers are laid out for me. It's going to be 1 over 20 equals 1 over DO, which is 30, and everything's positive because this is the converging lens right now, 
plus one over di1. So if I wanna solve for di1, I just subtract one over 30 from both sides. That'll be 0 0.016 repeating equals one over di1. And then we'll just invert both sides by hitting the negative one power on my calculator. And I get 60 centimeters equals di1. Now remember that 60 centimeters is positive. And for a lens, the positive side is this region right here. So 60 centimeters away, if the whole thing is 80, then 60 is what, like about here, three quarters of the way? That looks good. And I also know the image is gonna be inverted because the real image means it got inverted. Real images always get inverted from what they were before. So now let me label this on my diagram because this is 60 centimeters. And now this is my new DO2. So in other words, this arrow is two things. Number one, it's DI1. And number two, it's going to be DO2, which is specifically this distance right here, which is simply 80 minus 60. So that's 20 centimeters for DO2. DO2 equals 20 centimeters. It is positive because it's on the positive side still, the left side. And now I'm just gonna plug in the equation, but for the second one. So one over F2 equals one over DO2 plus one over DI2. So F2 for the diverging lens we said was negative 20 equals one over, we just said DO2 is positive 20 plus one over DI2. I subtract one over 20 from both sides and I will get negative 0.1 equals one over DI2. Again, I invert both of these and I will get a final answer of negative 10 centimeters equals di2. The negative means it's two things. Number one, it's a virtual image, and therefore the whole image is virtual. And the other thing is I don't wanna say upright because it's already upside down. So I'm just gonna say not inverted. And let me explain what I mean. So first of all, the image is going to be on the negative side, which is actually the left side for a lens. So I'll draw it in blue. It's gonna be 10 centimeters, it will be smaller, and it's gonna be on that negative side. You're also gonna notice it stays upside down because it's not inverted. If it got inverted again, it would be right side up. So I know that can get really confusing, but just to recap, real images always get inverted every time you pass through a lens. Virtual images do not get inverted when you pass through a lens, so they stay the same. And I said it was virtual because DI was negative. The last image was real because DI was positive. And so what that means when I say the image is 10 centimeters, notice it depends where I'm talking about. Let me zoom in. So when we got an answer of DI equals negative 10, that means this distance right here is, let me just clear some of this. That distance right there is 10 centimeters, which means the other distance, if you wanted to measure from the first lens, let's say, which depends on the problem, what they're asking for, but that distance is gonna be 70 centimeters because 70 plus 10 equals the total 80 centimeters between them. Or if you wanted to measure from the original object, I could even measure from here to my image, and that is 70 plus 30, so 100 centimeters from the original object. And yeah, I have all these distances. And which one's the right one? Well, it depends on the question. And by the way, I've seen a lot of different ways they can word the question. I've seen them word it where they ask from the original object. I've seen them word it from the second lens. They can ask a number of things, but you need to know exactly what they're talking about so you can actually have an educated answer in terms of the distance. Now, finally, I do wanna find the total magnification and to find the total magnification, I'm just gonna say M total equals magnification one, so DI1 over DO1 times negative DI2 over DO2. You're noticing that I'm not using the heights because I don't have any heights. And you're also gonna notice that this is not subtraction, this is multiplication. I know I see the minus sign, but it is multiplication. So negative DI1 
We said that was 60 because remember, it's in relation to the first lens. That's 60 centimeters away and it's on the positive side. So negative 60, the original object was 30 centimeters away and then times negative di2. Di2 was negative 10 and then divided by do2 which we said was positive 20 because that was this distance right here which was 20 centimeters away. So divide by a positive 20. Now I just need to plug this in my calculator. So negative 60 divided by 30 times negative, double negative, which actually makes it positive 10 over 20. And I will get a total magnification of negative one, which basically means that this answer negative one, it was the same height, which is what the one means, and it got inverted from the original. Now basically there's a few things we can say with the magnification. If the magnification is greater than one, that means it got larger. If the magnification is less than one, that means it got smaller. And obviously if it's equal one, it's the same height. And then we can also say if magnification is positive, that means the image is upright still. It didn't change. And if the final magnification is negative, well then it got inverted which is what we see here. So that's it for this first one. Now, if you're confused by any of that, you can either leave a comment below or you can just rewatch the explanation. Maybe it makes more sense the second time. These problems aren't exactly easy, I'll tell you that. But now let's move on to the next problem. We'll do one more, which is actually going to be two converging lenses. Now, does it matter that these two are both converging? No, it really doesn't matter. I just follow the same steps that I always do, and we'll be fine. So let's say this time my object is eight centimeters away from the first lens. The lenses are 10 centimeters apart. This lens is a focal length of six centimeters, and this lens has a focal length of 12 centimeters. So both are positive. And again, I'm gonna label my lenses one and two, and I'm just gonna deal with these one at a time. So for the first one, 1 over f1, that's the 6, so 1 over 6 equals 1 over do1, the object, which is 8, okay, plus 1 over di1, and I'm solving for di1. So once again, it starts out easy, but then it gets harder as we go on. So I get 0 0.0416 repeating equals 1 over di1, invert both sides, and I'll get a final answer of 24 centimeters. That's my DI1. Okay, so back to my picture. 24 centimeters, huh, that's interesting. So we are actually going to end up on the other side of the lens. 24 centimeters ends up being on that side. Also, since the image was a positive distance, like this is a positive number, it means it's going to be real, which means it's going to be inverted. So it's also inverted right off the bat. So that means my first image is gonna look something like this, okay? So there we go, I've got my first image. That wasn't so bad. But now my image just became my object. That's my new DO2. And the question is, what's this distance? Well, that distance is 24 minus 10, so 14 centimeters. But you have to be very careful, and here's why. When I set up that second equation, one over F2, which we said was 12 centimeters and it's positive, equals one over DO2. Well now your DO2 right here, that is on the negative side. Let me scroll up to the very beginning of what we said here. This is the negative side for DO, meaning when I say 14 centimeters is the distance right here, it should actually be a negative 14 when I plug it in my equation because we're on the negative side. So negative 14, I don't know why I put centimeters, I never put the units in my work. And then plus one over di2. Now, luckily the math is gonna take care of all the complicated stuff for us, so I'm not too worried from here. But one over 12 plus one over 14 now, it's going to be some crazy decimal that goes on forever. That's one over di2. And again, when I invert both sides, I'm gonna get di2 is a positive 6.46 centimeters. So 6.46 is gonna be 
about here. And I'm going to tell you this one's actually going to stay negative. Now you may be wondering why I got a positive di over here and positive means it got inverted. Well now hold on because the magnification equation for just lens 2, this is just m2, equals negative di which is positive 6.46 divided by negative 14 because that was my do was negative 14 and these two negatives cancel out meaning the magnification I don't care what number it is it's positive meaning that it's not inverted so it looks like there's a lot of things we need to be careful of here when doing these compound lens problems believe me I don't like them either but now this distance is 6.46 and if you wanted to find the total distance from let's say the image to the original object then you would just add 6.46 plus 10 plus 8 to get your final image distance from the original object and of course it depends on what the question's asking for and finally let's find the magnification total which is going to be negative di1 over do1 times negative di2 over do2 so that means negative di1 let's scroll up we said that was 24 centimeters there so 24 divided by do1 was 8 and then times negative di2 we said was 6.46 that was the answer we just got and then divided by do2 which was negative 14 let's see what we get for our final magnification i'm getting negative 1.38 which means the final image should be inverted and larger because it's greater than one. And I'm also pretty sure this is going to stay a virtual image because even though lens one made a real image, lens two is gonna make a virtual image. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the image did not get inverted. In other words, it stayed the same direction as DO2. And that means it's going to not be real it's going to be virtual so hopefully that made about as much sense as any of this stuff can make if you do have any questions please post them in the comments below so thank you all for watching i hope you have a great rest of your day take care and bye bye